Hey everyone, it's Lexis. I hope you are all doing well. Today I have an assembly video for you. Um, I, obviously with spring and summer, we always love to come out with three-dimensional florals and this chapter release um, for number two, chapter two, is no different. We have this beautiful orchid die by Jen Ogborn. I'm going to walk you through today on how to use and to assemble. It works perfectly with a ton of our different surfaces. I'm going to show you two of them today, but it works with more than just the two I'm going to show you. And if you stick around to the very end, I have got a lovely discount code for you that you can use on the supplies I'm going to show you today. So give me just a second. I'm going to switch to my overhead camera and we'll get right in on how to make this lovely orchid. Okay, so first things first, we are going to go through like what you actually need to cut in order to make this orchid. I'm gonna just pull that up so you can see it nice and close. It is a really simple flower to put together, which is really nice and lovely because sometimes you wanna make a lot of something and you don't wanna spend a lot of time cutting, which I totally understand. Sometimes you've gotta make a lot in a short amount of time. So the orchid's perfect um, for quick, easy, kind of projects, if you will. Um, I will be cutting on our switch machine today. So I'm gonna pull this in real quick and I'm gonna show you everything you need to cut. Doesn't help that I have nails, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so in the actual die set, you're going to get these two kind of base flowers pieces, and then you're gonna get these kind of inner flower por portions. So I'm just gonna turn on my machine real quick, and I've got mine set up to cut thinlets right now, and I'm just gonna put my top cutting plate on and make sure they're aligned well um, before I put them through the machine. Okay, everything looks good, here we go. This machine is so wonderful. I don't have to do anything. I can just put it in and then all that cracking noise you're hearing is completely normal. That just means that the dies are actually cutting into the cutting plates and that, I know it scares people the first time they hear it, but it is completely normal to hear that cracking noise. Um, so you see I've got my main pieces right here. I'm just gonna show you what they are quickly. So you're going to need just one of this tri, uh, tripod kind of flower piece and then one of the main elements. And then I'm going to grab a die pick real quick and get these smaller ones out. So then you're going to just need one of everything essentially. So what's nice is you can just run this through the machine one time and you've got all the pieces you need for one flower, which I think ultimately when you're doing flower making is really nice just to be able to have that. So I'm going to get um, the machine out of the way because that's all the cutting I'm going to be doing right now. And we've got our main pieces. I'm going to turn the machine off, save that energy. <laughs> Let me move this over so I've got room to make. Okay. So now I've got my main pieces and something that I really love with, especially with orchids, if you look them up online, they have a lot of really beautiful color and you can um, add your own kind of twist on them and add the detailing in with inks or pastels. Um, the choice or the opportunity, I should say, to really kind of swing them up into different colors and use different colors is all over the place. I'm just plugging in my glue gun because I'm gonna be using hot glue today. So what I did is I took these pieces already earlier and cut them out. And then I have since added ink to them. So what I did is I went in, I have this cream paper from our muted collection. It's really pretty and it offers like a nice, soft, warm um, tone instead of like the bright white. Um, the white is beautiful as well though because you can get those orchids that have like the really magenta purple tones in the center. But I wanted to do something that was cream and soft and um, very spring-like. So what I did is I went in with our multi-tool 
and I just gently inked the centers and the edges using the mustard seed and wild honey distress inks from Ranger. So you can see I've done that on all of the main pieces and I'm going to just kind of move right into that. I wasn't gonna demo that because I wanna show like the actual assembly, um, but I literally just went in and added those two colors where I saw fit. I wanna show you how to sculpt these. So I'm gonna use my fold and form tool, um, which is perfect for sculpting flowers, whether they're made out of cray paper or they're made out of cardstock. Um, I love being able to just kind of get a more organic shape and this is the easiest way to do it. So I'm just going in, I'm putting the flower piece in between the two prongs right here, and I'm just gently kind of curving that cardstock up and over. There is a, um, a rounded edge right here, which allows a really nice and smooth, uh, I'm trying to think, sculpt, I would say so that you can get something that feels a little bit more organic instead of having like a harsh line. So I'm gonna do that on all of my pieces, just add a little bit of dimension by kind of just shaping those. And I love that I can pull them back and do what I want with them. So if it gets too, um, too rounded, I can pull the paper back and just soften it out that way. But I am gonna do that with all of my pieces just to give them a nice organic feel. You could also use the paper sculpting toolkit um, if you wanted to get like a really organic feel, but I feel like with orchids, they're a very structured flower. So I personally don't recommend um, using the stylus tools for them just because with orchids, that's not how they naturally look in real life. So I'm just using something that's just giving them a little bit of a curvature and really captures what is a little bit more organic to the actual orchid, which is just a little bit of curved structure. So now I've got all of my pieces ready to go. Move these out of the way real quick. And I have some glue over here. This is a really simple flower to put together. Um, I am going to be using hot glue today because I just wanted something quick and fast <laughs> to set it. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two petal piece and you're gonna layer it right here on the center of your flower. Um, your base flower, I should say. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue. A little bit goes a long way. Um, and I'm just gonna layer that in where I want and then just hold it down. If you're someone who is excessive with glue, I would just grab your glue gun accessories and use those so you don't have to worry about your fingers getting burned. Um, and what's nice is these are made out of silicone, so they are heat resistant, which is beautiful. They won't melt. Then you're gonna take this um, two prong piece right here and we're gonna add that right into the center. So I'm just gonna put a little glue on the back of that and add that in. Okay, use my little spatula tool to hold it in place. Now this next piece, I've kind of done it both ways. Um, I've done this piece next or I've done the other piece next. Depends on what you feel like, but this piece is supposed to go next. It reminds me of like a little insect with antennas at the top and I've totally just dropped that and now I've got glue everywhere which is not ideal but luckily with hot glue if you get it just right you can peel it off so I'll show you kind of what it looks like when you're putting those in and then you can play around with this and that's another reason I use hot glue is it is a much firmer stronger adhesive so like an adhesive bond I should say so basically what I I want to do is manipulate these afterwards sometimes and I find with hot glue it's easier to do that because it doesn't tear the paper up whereas with a like liquid adhesive which is totally fine on these I feel like the liquid adhesive is a little too light of a bond though and I get tears or rips um, a lot easier than with hot glue okay so that is literally how you put the orchid together it is so quick so fast there are um, 
a leaf shape that comes with it. I've cut this one out of crepe paper because I did a crepe paper one that I used earlier. So you could if you wanted to add the leaves on. Technically with orchids, the leaves sit at the very bottom, which is what I've done with the crepe paper one, which I'm gonna show you real quick how I did that. So I've made this as realistic as possible and I've actually put it in a potted plant and I'm gonna take it out because I've put foam inside of the potted plant so that I can take this in and out. So what I did is I cut all of my orchid pieces out of crepe paper and then I used my fold and form tool to give them a little bit of shape. I went over them with our permanent marker pens to add in some color um, similar to what you would see on real orchids. With crepe paper, it is much more delicate. Um, our crepe paper comes in three different packs. I'm gonna show you those real quick. And what I like about our crepe paper is it's somewhere in between a really heavy and a really light crepe paper. I would say it's like in the mid range. So it is strong enough to hold the shape really well, but um, delicate enough to make it feel like a natural flower. So we've got three different colorways in our crepe paper packs. And I really like that you get both neutral tones and bold tones and you get some greenery um, in here as well to allow you to be able to do the foliage. So I have used a darker kind of plum color um, from this pack right here, which is, I'm trying to find the name on this one because it's Color Splash, that's what it is. It was, uh, oh no, this one's vintage. Although there is one very similar in Color Splash right here. So I've used this purple kind of plum tone for mine but they do come in three paper packs they have a really nice elasticity which is what you want when you're trying to really shape something so how i did this one is i took a single stem of floral wire and i added at different places as you can kind of see i added some little beads in three different places. I hot glued them and then I wrapped those in a, a different green crepe paper and then I went back over the wire with um, floral tape so that I could have something that looked natural on the back side especially when you're doing a flower like this where it kind of typically does grow a few buds on one stem. So I've done that just so it felt more organic and real. And then I just hot glued the flowers to those little buds. Then at the bottom, I took two of those leaves, shaped them, and then glued them to the bottom of the floral wire. And then I had this lovely little pot and I put some foam, um, foam in there, as you can hear. And I've just been put a little moss at the top to make it feel real because my aunt has orchids in her house and that is actually what she has at the bottom of hers is moss. Um, so this looks very real in the person and really nice, but you can do these out of crepe paper, you can do them out of cardstock, you could even do them out of our sculpting foam. Um, what's nice about our cardstock is we have a lot of different colors and they take blending inks really well, but our crepe papers also take pastels and chalks, um, permanent pens. You can color them also in different colors with the distress inks. So there's a lot of versatility in your ability to color these, um, but as you can see, they were really quick, easy, and fast to put together, and you could use them as little table place um, settings if you wanted to just do a single flower with a leaf like that, or you can actually make them into a, um, a realistic kind of orchid plant. Um, let me switch back to my front facing camera and I will be right with you. So I hope you enjoyed that how to assemble for the lovely orchid flower by Jen Ockborn. It is available now on c6.com and c6.co.uk. We love to see what you guys make. So please, if you are using any of our projects and putting them up on social media, please use the hashtag my making story and tag us so that we can share your makes with everyone else. Um, all of this product is available, like I said, on our websites. And if you want to purchase any of the product I showed today, you can do that. And you can use a special discount code I have. If you, when you go to checkout, use the code Alexis20, A-L-E-X-I-S-20. And you will get a lovely little discount on the products I showed. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.